This is Station 142, Defam Green, United States Army Air Force Base in Norfolk, and this is the first stop on our Ghost Airfields tour. The station was home to the 452nd Bombardment Group of United States 8th Army Air Force. The 452nd Group consisted of four squadrons, the 728th, the 729th, the 730th and the 731st. All four squadrons in the group flew the B-17 Flying Fortress aircraft. The base itself was operational from February 1944 until April 1945 and in that time the 452nd Bomb Group flew 250 combat missions over Hitler's Third Reich. Closed in 1948 and finally sold off in 1959, the base has been slowly fading away. Most of the buildings have been pulled down but there are a few survivors still clinging on. Silent sentinels to a forgotten past. The concrete runways, perimeter track and aircraft half standing appear at intervals hidden amongst the fields of crops. The faint traces still there. If the land was not private property, you could walk the entire circuit and it's not a small base. The main runway itself was 2,000 yards long. That's over a mile. The entire base stretched from Great Ellingham up to Hingham, home to 3,000 Americans and their machines of war. Now, just silent fields. There's only one thing here that can tell you what was once on this site. On a quiet corner of the Attleboro Road, under the shade of some trees, stands the memorial to the 452nd Bomb Group, where you can take a few moments to pay your respects. And maybe, if you listen hard enough, you may hear the throb of engines as the ghost squadrons of flying fortress planes take flight. So here we are, mm. out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> what can I show you guys? What I can show you, I'm just going to step off here so don't trip over. Um, you can see it's, well, you know, it, it's all been changed back and it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful here. It's very, very tranquil. Um, there isn't much left of the base itself, um, but we've come across some old buildings and things. So, yeah. It's really lovely. I have been to this location, but um, I didn't do any research or anything like that. I had a look around and thought it's um, with um, some of my friends and I thought it's worth a proper investigation out here. But yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing. I mean, looking at this, I know it's a bit of concrete and stuff like that, but... We soak up the atmosphere and we get ready for the investigation. I take a few moments of quiet contemplation and I think what it must have been like to have been here during the war when this was an operational station. Okay, so I've just taken a few moments to tune in um, to see if I am sensing anything and already I'm picking up on a group of airmen but they're just kind of watching. It's like the very, very silent watchers are looking. It's almost like they're standing in a formation, but they're looking on. Almost like um, sometimes where you stand still out of respect, it's like there's a formation of them all standing together, but they're standing with their hands like that. And I'd probably say it's not a huge amount of men, it's probably about 12 men. I'm not getting any names as yet. But we shall see. We're back. Now, right now you will see we are on part of the original runway. 
and it really is quite amazing. You can hear in the background that we've got the uh, spirit box going. That sounded German. That did, didn't it? We sat on the spirit box just to see what we can pick up because we were driving along the road, like I said, and Juliet has got a sense of something here. We've stopped. Absolutely. Yep. And the box has already given us the name Steve. And it just said absolutely. Nothing on my K2. No. Help us. What was that? Sounded like help, help us. us. So the spirit box is running. I have picked up on a man named Steve in this area already. He's been communicating on the spirit box. Steve, are you with us now? Go on, Steve. Tell us you're here. Did you hear that, guys? Just said the name Steve. Can you repeat that name for me, please? Steve. Again, we've had that twice. It's an unusual sight. It's not the sort of thing you would expect to be coming to look at. It is basically just an old World War II United States Army Air Force Air Base. You Behind me, you can see Juliet friends. on the road there. She's doing the live to Facebook at the moment. That's the runway. And it goes up there. It's coming down here. It's amazing. And Loaded runs off behind them, me as well. Straight as now, and they've laid this back. road on top of the runway. It's quite a fascinating place. You can still see over here part of the airfield that hasn't been destroyed and ripped up. But you can just imagine these planes just coming down here it's amazing loaded with men that perhaps knew they would not be coming back So, what exactly was it like to fly on a mission from Defam Green? You taxi along a runway, waiting for the green flare to give you the signal to go. Engines roar as you accelerate down the runway, and before you know it, you're up, in flight. You bank and turn, and then join up with the rest of your squadron. Out over the sea, you form up into your boxes, then head towards your target for today. Your box formations keep you safe, and you scan the skies for enemy planes. Down below, the klaxons wail, and men run to their planes. Defenders of the Reich take flight, and the wolf pack forms. The hunt begins. Enemy planes, two o'clock, coming in fast. Pick your targets, guys. Give them hell. They close in for the kill. Machine guns bark as the rounds scream out. You get a kill, and one of the pack goes down in flames. Guns grip tight. You keep firing, keep firing, and hope you can drive them away. But one's broken through, 
and he's got you in his sights. The cannon shells rip through your wings and your engines are alight. And slowly, oh so slowly, you fall from sight. Over the target, you begin your run. The bomb aimer adjusts his sights. Bombs away, you see them fall. A direct hit and smoke billows out. You turn and head for home and pray that you make it back. But not everybody did. The 452nd Bomb Group flew 250 combat missions, hitting such targets as Castle, Brunswick, Bremen and their bearing works at Schweinfurt. They lost 110 aircraft in these missions. That's enough to equip their squadrons twice over. They also lost 441 airmen killed on these raids, never to come back. They're starting slowly to destroy what's left of the beautiful history that was once here. So there's all rubble. It's obviously, I've just completely torn it up. This is one of the reasons why myself and Juliet are here looking at these old airfields because we want to sort of save what we can, the history of them, and just to see if we can touch, get in touch with echoes of the past. If there is anything here that wants to talk to us, and so far, it's been very interesting. Steve, clear as day. <laughs> He's back again. Hello, Steve. Steve, were you here during the time during World War II? I picked up that Steve was an engineer. Steve, female, just said Steve again. Steve, were you air crew? United States Army Air Force. Four hundred and fifty second bomb group based here at Ethan. Station one four two. Can you confirm yes or no? Air crew. Can you repeat that, please? We didn't catch it. Steve. Edward, yeah, I've had Edward. Edward, are you there? Steve. Sorry, Steve. Steve, again. That was very clear. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, I mean, it's starting to kick off a little bit here. We already had these spirit box on earlier on, and we've, we've got a guy called Steve who's earlier. so persistent. We got him sort of stood quite a few times through the um, spirit box. Together. And we asked him if he was air crew, and he came back and said, Steve, Two names, air crew. Steve, and it was clear on the spirit box. It's really quite interesting. Okay. It could Steve be the, the fact that we think we can hear it and we want to hear it, so that's why our ears interpret as the sound um, that we want to hear, Steve but did not come it did home sound very, very clear and we had specifically on, asked uh, him 
was he air crew? Right. And he said, Steve, air crew. So, very interesting. It's quite fun. Steve. Okay, guys. Well, as you've heard, um, we are getting a lot of Steve. He's very clearly said on more than one occasion what his name is. And he also confirmed that he was air crew. And he flew from this runway. Now, I don't believe that he came home. Steve, you didn't return, did you? No, no confirmation about that. But, I mean, as Nigel said earlier, one of the reasons why we're doing this is out of respect. Just to keep the memory alive. Because everything is disappearing and being ripped up. Very strange. We we're just about to drive off down the road um, to go to another location to look at some old buildings. Sat in the car, getting ourselves prepared, and all of a sudden we hear this. Like someone no, trying to attack our attention. It's happening on the car from video. outside. So I'm gonna I mean, it's not like here. someone had thrown something. Yeah, it was that a was deliberate. So very strange. On the car. Really weird. We come out to have a look, see what we could see, and there's no one here. I am picking up again a group of men, the same group that I picked up earlier. 12 of them together. Two names, Steve and the other name, Edward. Steve was an engineer. Haven't got much for Edward yet. Um, I do believe that Steve did not come home when he went off on uh, a flight. It's quite a fascinating place. You can still see over here part of the airfield that hasn't been destroyed and ripped up. Okay, I'll tell you what I am picking up. A lot of confusion. Um, I'm, I keep seeing the same image. It's like um, a cracked windscreen on an aeroplane. Sorry, I just heard something as I was talking. So there, so there was an incident, an event, something happened here. But I don't think it was in this spot. Um, but something definitely did happen here. Just trying to get a feel for the energy in this place. But there is like a little bit of panic, confusion. A lot of people running about, but I mean, that could just be obviously what happened um, during the war when they were hurrying to get planes ready and... But it's just amazing. I mean, look at this place. Really is amazing. Okay, definitely some incident happened. Something to do with one of the aeroplanes. And it was a big plane. It, it, it had quite a large crew. I mean, I know nothing about airplanes, so forgive me, but... Um, I would say there was probably a good 10 people on this one. There was quite a few. Let's do some calling out. If there is anybody here with us now, can you make a sound? Let us know that you're here with us this evening.
and we'd just like to make contact with you. There you are here, can you touch one of us? Can you make a sound? I don't know if any of you can pick this up, but I am getting whispering. I can hear quite a lot of whispering. And it's different to the rustling that you get with, you know, plants that are moving. It's definitely people whispering. Can you please make a sound, touch one of us and let us know that you are here? I know that we were just about to leave and something hit the side of my car. If that was you, can you make a noise again? Perhaps hit the gate near us here? Any airmen here? Air crew, members of the 452nd Bomb Group. We're here out of respect. We know quite a few of you flew out from this base and never came back. We'd like to hear your stories. I'm still getting, Nigel, I said earlier that there was some kind of incident. I think it was with the plane because I'm seeing a lot of panic, um, a cracked windshield of the plane. And it was, there was probably, I'd say about 10 men. And I'm picking up on that here. There would have been, I mean, that's a standard crew for a flying fortress. They have a crew oh, of 10. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. And you can imagine, um, if you've been out on a raid and you're trying to nurse a, a crippled air, airplane back to this base... Yeah, that's what it was. There's going to be quite a few of them coming down here, shot to pieces. Yeah, it was yeah. quite chaotic and there was a fire Yeah. as well. When all, all this is all documented, the thing we're after getting them to say to us is the names of their aeroplanes, because they've all got individual names. Okay. And that's the great thing, is if we can get them to actually come up with the names, then we've got a good idea, we can actually match the names to the airbase. Naming aircraft and adding nose art was a morale booster. And for air crews in daily combat, facing the prospect of death on every mission, that boost was badly needed. Air crew were young men, late teens to mid twenties, far from home, and the art on the plane unified the crews and gave them an identity. There was widespread appeal in the practice, since it was not officially approved and it provided a playful outlet against authority. The 452nd Bomb Group had quite a selection. Amongst them are some of the more regular themes, pin-up girls, their home states, the names of wives or girlfriends, and cartoon characters. There were also names to intimidate the enemy. The most famous named plane at Defum was the Eradicator in the 730th Bomb Squadron. This was to be the only aircraft of the 452nd to survive every mission. Eradicator completed an incredible 120 bombing missions, a major triumph for any operational aircraft. Its reward for this achievement was to be unceremoniously scrapped in December 1945. A truly sad end for such a remarkable plane. It's the same with any names that are produced today. Um, if anybody comes up and says, we've got Stan, we've got Steve, we've got Steve as an engineer, so I can check and see if there's a Steve engineer on the records, because I know how to access the records. That's what I do for the research. Wow. Which so is much history, isn't it? it? It's just so much history, yeah. and it's all just getting lost which is why we're doing the bases i know this is why we're going around them i know you know we it's may not get anything at all you know we may get little snippets that we're getting tonight but even if we don't get anything paranormal we're getting the history it's, it's just amazing. nice to actually be here and look at it and it's yeah. somewhere different mm -hmm. and that's the thing and it is somewhat sometimes it's nice to go to different places where there isn't any history we knew nothing about this place when we came here 
Mm. No ghost stories, no nothing. There was no no towels at all, and we've got two already. Yeah, I want to know what they are, but I'm yeah. not allowed. I can't tell you. <laughs> I want to know. It's not fair. Hmm. Hello, guys. Well, we're back, as promised. Um, we're live at the building. So I just want to show you. It is private property, so we do have to keep our distance, but we can just about see them. And these are, I mean, what do you think they were, Nige? Well, that's a Nissan hut. No idea what they used it for, though. Yeah. Some kind of stores, I would imagine. It's very interesting. See down there were the gates from the original bits of the base as well. Yeah, there was original gates, yeah, yeah. from the base. Really weird. Absolutely amazing. It's just, you just come across snippets of history. just a shame because it would have been nice to have looked around them but you know we have to be respectful of other people's property do you want to get some kit out should we start calling out what do you want to do I don't know I don't know I don't think we should really <sighs> maybe the problem not is it's so close to people's houses isn't mm. it I don't think they're going to appreciate it very much, us very much doing stuff here. Yeah. It's a shame, but... It is. You know, we have to be so careful what we do. It's true. We don't want to go upsetting people. We don't. That's very true. Yeah, giving ourselves a bad name as well. Mm, certainly There's plenty don't of want other that. groups around here would quite cheerfully break into these buildings. Yeah, no. You know, but we don't do that sort of thing. No, we do not. We do not trespass. We only go where we actually got permission. We did try and get permission to just go onto some of the land here and they weren't yeah. they didn't reply to us, so we're just going onto the bits that we can. We did try guys. But it doesn't matter because we're getting stuff and I think as the darkness falls it may get a bit more interesting. Mm. I would like to go back up to up the road where we were because I was getting stuff up there. The top of the runway? Uh -huh. Or the memorial? Both actually. Okay. We return to an area where Juliet had sensed a spirit earlier, and as darkness falls, it starts to get quite interesting. Okay, Juliet's got something on the K2 meter. We have none of our kit on here. Um, no phones on, no nothing. We've turned the radio mics off as well because they react to, the K2 reacts to those. And it was flashing. It was flashing. Let's see if I can get him back. Steve, can you help me out with this? Please. Can, can you, you flash the, the device K2, again? Make the K2 flash for me, the device in my left hand. Thank you. I get the impression that, Steve, if you're here, you're trying to show me something. Is there a location that you would like us to go to? If there is a location you'd like us to go to, can you make the meter in my hand flash by walking towards it, please? If you're still here with me, can you walk closer to this meter and it will flash so I know you're here? Can I just check something? Make sure it's not my camera that's making it do that. Yeah. I'm just going to move the camera in a bit nearer, make sure it's not my camera. No. No. I'm walking away. Let me just, yeah, go away. Sorry. Follow me. <laughs> in the nicest possible, I will follow you, but I'm keeping a distance, so. Yeah, we're still getting readings, we've gone up to red. <gasps> Can you head towards the little device on the floor there? Hmm? We'll see if we can set, set, get him to set the REM pod off. It's over here. Where is it? Set there. Steve, can you see in front of me? There's a device, a black device on the ground. Can I'll, you please walk towards that device? I'll turn it on for you and I'll show you what you need to do. Just bear with us, we're just going to switch it on. Okay. If you go near it, we'll know that you're there. Can you try that? Steve, can you please walk to... 
sorry, forgive me. Can you please walk towards the black device on the ground? It just lets us know that you're present. Please. I feel like heaviness in my, my hand, my right arm. A lot of heaviness. Did something happen to your arm? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so something happened to the, was it the right hand side of you? If something happened, can you try and get the light to flash to red for me? Please. Because I'm getting a sensation in my right arm here. We're getting up to red on the K2. Yeah. Just like to point out there is nothing here. No. There is nothing here. There's no, there's no electric pylons. There is nothing here at all. The nearest thing to us that could be construed as electric is the Tackleston transmitter, which is way, way, way off in the distance over there. And there's no way it's going to be that affecting it. And it is still flashing. Um, my phone is in the car. Juliet's phone is in the car. Yep. Uh, I've turned the radio mics off on here because they were setting the, the meter off, so we're not using the radio mic, we're actually using the, the microphone on the camera itself. And I know that the wireless function on the camera is turned off as well, because I've not actually got that running at the moment either. So there's nothing here that could set that off. So we've obviously picking up something, not entirely certain what it is, but no. let's see. We put the... Um, REM pod down the floor to see if we can respond to set that off, but it doesn't seem very interesting at the moment. It's more interesting getting the K2 to flash and trying to contact Juliet by the look of it. I tell you what is interesting, Nigel, as well, is that when I put the K2 on the ground, it goes back to green, and then when I elevate it to person height, it's flashing. It flashes again, yeah. And you can see. This is person height. It's like there's somebody here with me right now. Can you sense anything? Yes, I can sense something. I can sense something on my right hand side here. I'm just going to move this around. It's not as busy over here. No, it's not up to the red, is it? No, but it's busier. Having said that, yeah. Here. There it goes again. Yeah. We're actually standing on part of the old runway. I'm following. I do hope I'm going the right way. Which way do you want me to go? Is it here? I know. Yeah, it's gone again. Please come back. We were about to move on once again. Then something happened that made us stop. Just what? quickly got out of the car because, well, Juliet. What did you see? I saw someone standing here. Just a, a figure, a black figure standing. And I am freezing. Bitterly cold. My spidey senses, tuned all up my arm. All the hairs on my arms are standing up. <laughs> You're making me shake now. I saw a black figure just standing here, the shape of a man, standing here. Oh my God, after that experience we just had here. On his own, there wasn't anyone else, just one person. Okay, right, we're in um, part of the concrete hard standing area of the runway again. 
Well, we're doing a session here early on where the K2 meter was flashing like absolutely crazy. And um, we both felt like, well, you were picking up on injuries and things, weren't you? Yeah, I've got, I've just felt somebody touch my side. Here we go. Somebody has just touched me. We got into the car after sort of finishing here. Juliet then said there's a figure standing outside. We've got out to actually see what's out here. And it's right, it's cold. Oh, I told you. It's cold. <laughs> Yeah. It's here, isn't it? Yeah. It's actually here. It is. That's really strange. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah. There's, no, been... there's no wind. No. And it is just like crazy. Do you pick anything up? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm got... getting a mail. He's touched my side here. He's touched my side here. That's where it's cold mm. behind your back. You can okay. feel it. You put your arm, oh, yeah, put, my, yeah, yeah. put my arm there. You can actually feel it. it's cold. Yeah, how weird. Is it? He's, he's here. He's, he's uh, to wow. put the camera, put the camera the other side of me. Just gonna have a look. This side of me. Oh God, just touch me. Didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I wasn't expecting that. Did not like having the camera on him at all. Goodness. Yeah. Wow. I can't see what you're doing. Let me spin your hand. Just jumped. How strange. Yeah. Would you like to touch me again? Let me just step back a bit. Right, this shoulder just been touched on this shoulder, this side. Do you know what? It's always this, and my back has just been touched. <clears throat> I just saw a shadow come across your back. Really? Yeah. I don't know if I got it on, on, on here or not, but I did. And then you said, wow. Did you get it on camera? I don't know. I was filming. So I, I may have done, but there was like something moved behind you. And then you said, I can feel something behind me. The last time when we said we were going to go and we had the thing hit the car. Yeah. It's like, whatever it is, holding my hand, touching my hand, whatever it is, doesn't want us to go. Whomever, sorry, I don't mean to be disrespectful. It was not you, was it? I was walking then, sorry. No, but there's a shadow that's picked up along here. That's, that is exactly where I saw the one that went behind you. Oh, really? It was so odd. And I was like, just as you said, I could feel something behind me, then the shadow was there. We're filming from inside the car because, no word of a lie, we just saw something shoot across the front of the car. Just on it again. Did you get it on camera? I've had the camera running, so whether we picked it up or not, I don't know. But that was, uh, wow. That was, you know, <laughs> I don't, I'm, yeah, I've never seen anything like that. That was amazing. That was just. And I saw that figure as well outside. Yeah. One of us then moving across in front of the car. There's still movement. It is very strange. Very strange. There it is again. Look. Look. Shit. Oh my God. What is it? I don't know. What is Are it? Are you getting this on camera? I fucking hope so, but I just saw it. It's like someone walking past. Yeah. It's surreal. Oh my god. Uh, bloody hell. I don't I can't believe I'm watching this. I don't I'm not sure I'm gonna get this on camera because it's too bright, but 
And then again and again and again. I know, Fuck. I know. I'm watching, I'm watching. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. What is it? sitting in the car just ready to drive off and no word of a lie we have had shadows moving across the front of the car and it's like people walking past you know like, like a series of figures walking past it's unbelievable we're hoping that we got it on camera we can't promise because it is quite dark here but i've never seen anything like it the first shadow that came past we're went still, really still, quickly there's didn't still it still some there's still shadows look still doing it good lord Incredible. We, I, I've never seen anything like this. Never no. seen anything like this. What do you think? I'm, I'm blown away. I am absolutely blown away. I'm, I'm just trying to get my head around this. I mean, I have no idea. We're, we're both set. Oh, no, it's still going. No, it's, it's still just, happening. It's just no idea, possibly, what this could be. It's like people moving around is the only way there it is again again yeah oh my god oh my god i don't know what god. to say i'm yeah wow i don't know what it is we really don't know what it is this is so weird i'm gonna see if i can get it on camera again i'll spin the camera around hold on Got it on night shot at the moment, see if that makes any difference. But I'm going to turn it off again because it's easy to see the shadows when I've got the night shot on it. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Did you sit? Oh. <laughs> Did you get them on camera? <laughs> Fuck! Did you get them on camera? <laughs> it's not us, is it? It's no, it's not us. I don't know, I've been filming, but I, don't, I honestly don't know until we have a good look at it. Good grief. I really hope so. This is incredible. Yeah, I'm looking out and I could see a black figure outside the car just standing there observing us. Um, so I got out of the car to investigate. Um, nothing much really happened, you know, but it was incredibly cold around me, incredibly cold around us. Excuse me if I flinch, but there's bugs flying all around me and I hate creepy crawly insects. Um, as we both get back into the car, we're literally watching shadows outside the car we are absolutely watching things moving outside the car we cannot explain what it is what's your take on it Nigel? you know what it's bloody things there's a big old bug there it was the weirdest thing the first one the first one that we saw whizzed across in front of us wasn't it like someone running past it was so frightening honestly i i we both went yeah, we yeah. Went, was i was amazed because we could actually watch whatever it was, the figure just walked Walk straight, straight past, past us. Straight past the bonnet of my car. It was the weirdest, weirdest thing. And then we're sitting here watching it and you can see figures in the road. You can see shapes going past. It's like people constantly walking past the front of the vehicle. Um, but I'm gonna flip the camera around now on the phone and turn the lights out and just see if you guys live can actually see what we have been seeing because it's been bizarre. Right, let's flip it round turn the lights out and just see if you guys can actually see any movement at all I can't see anything nice no it's not doing it now is it bloody typical <sighs> all you can see is just the grass sort of waving let me rev the engine that's unbelievable nothing it's hot score isn't it oh, yeah yeah Come on. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Can you see this, guys? Are you seeing these figures? What, what the, the bloody what hell? The what the fuck is that? Excuse, excuse my French. I do apologise for swearing, but... What's doing that? We have no idea. We can't explain this. What's behind us? There can't be anything behind us, though, in a shadow, can it? Because there's no light behind us. There's nothing behind us. I do believe, guys, we're capturing real paranormal footage right now. This is bonkers. What the? 
We are recording live, folks. This is real footage. I do believe we're capturing something. And we have, we cannot explain this at all. And it is not, it's not insects flying in front of the headlamps oh because the God. figures are just too, too big. big. I'm trying to keep the phone as still as I can, guys. This is just bonkers. This is unbelievable. It's got to be an explanation for it. Well, what? I don't know. Well, neither do I. We're both sat here. We know, we can see where the trees are. It's not the trees. And it's not like grass. You can see how clear the grass is. And it's and not is. insects. It's not shadows from insects on the headlights because it's way too big. Nigel's out there. Just to see if he can actually see anything. I mean, you can see there's bugs outside. I mean, you know. Right. I'm gonna hop out of the car. I'm gonna head out now and just see. I'll leave the engine running so we've got the lights. What did you see? Something touched you. What touched you? Okay. I mean, this is where the shadows were happening. Doing it, and there's nothing in front of the car. Yeah, there's, there's nothing no in front of the car. There. There's no lights behind it. The only other lights you've got on them ones over there were way too far away to actually throw a shadow. No, they wouldn't throw a shadow. That's bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. And I'll tell you what I've, I've had as well, and I said this to Nigel earlier. Um, ever since we've been in this particular location, I've had a feeling it's like tinnitus in my ears like a, a ringing in my ears, constant ringing, and it just won't shift. Right, okay, I'm gonna go back in the car. Actually, no, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna head towards the car and not fall over and give you all a good laugh. Even though I know you'd love to see me bugger over. Right, car headlamps. No massive moths flying around them, okay? You've got little bugs, but nothing flying around. The shadows are still happening. Yeah. That, that's you. Hang on a minute. This is an experiment though, right? Because if we're moving around here, this is the kind of shadow, right? The same kind of shadow. Well, that's your hand, so we're actually seeing. So it has to be something fairly big to create that kind of a shadow. And that's the kind of shadow that we've been seeing. No, you see, it's weird. There's nothing now. How odd. Well, I just... well. I wonder, because things... This is the third time now when we've said we're going to head off, things start happening. Yeah. So maybe if we get back in the car... Yeah. It's just... This is crazy. Okay, last session of the night, we're back to the memorial and uh, we're just out of the REM pod again. Got my mail motor out just to see if there's anything going on. And as you can see, it is completely flat. There is nothing here at all. If there is anyone here with us now, can you please touch one of us? Can you make a sound? Footsteps. Yeah. We're getting footsteps. Yeah. I'm not sure where they're coming from. Behind us. Behind us. Looks like someone was walking on the road. I'm definitely sensing the spirit present. I'm 
out in high numbers. You're getting the sensation again there's more more than one again. Yeah. But like before they're really quiet. Just standing and watching. Mm -hmm. There's nothing behind me. Sorry, I can't my torch isn't bright enough to show you, but I've just had a look and there isn't anything behind me, but we are hearing sounds of footsteps or shuffling. I tell you what I'm getting as well as like um a pulsing sound. Yeah. Like a reverberating pulsing. Yeah. As engines, plane engines. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. Mm. So wonder if you sort of getting the sensation that they would have felt when they were on the planes. Mm. Do come forward. We really don't mean any harm. We just came to pay our respects and to say hello. I know it is quite late, and the reason why we've come so late is because it's quieter, and there's not so much noise. There's more chance of actually hearing you if you want to say something to us. We'd love to talk to you. And hear some of the stories that you have to tell. Amazing stories. I'm getting talking, Nigel. I can hear men. Again. Can you hear it? I can't, no. Okay. So frustrating. It's, do you know what? It's incredibly faint, though. It's um, just not murmuring. Yeah, it's really, really faint. Yeah. Can you hear it? I can hear it. Okay. There's more than one. That's really strange. Mm. It's like sort of muffled conversations in the background, isn't it? Yeah. It's like you've walked into like a big room and lots of people are like okay. talking. Absolutely. Very strange. I'm not actually picking anything up. It's flat, isn't it? I'm not, personally. Just walk down to um, it's like a large concrete uh, slab here. Set the kit up down here as well to see if we've got anything else, but there's nothing going on. It's really flat. I put the um, memorial bit just earlier on. Um, we could both hear like muffled voices. It was very very strange, and um, I got the sort of sound of a buzz in my ear, like really loud. And as we turned to walk away, I turned and looked back towards a memorial, and I'm sure there was a figure standing there. Really odd. But um, after the experience we had with the shadows earlier on, I think we're both um, pretty much <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> so, could be our minds playing tricks on us, but um, it's quite interesting. But we definitely heard the voices. It was just like a background murmur. Really, very strange. I don't understand that at all. And with silence now falling, we decide it's time for us to call it a night. But we don't think this story's finished just yet. What had begun as an impromptu investigation quickly turned into possibly the best investigation we've ever done. And all because of a chance visit with some friends. Juliet picking up that there were some strong echoes here, saying, we just have to investigate. And that's exactly what we did. But who would have thought that such an unassuming location, with no history of previous investigations, would provide us with such compelling evidence? From mysterious figures, voices calling out to us, the feeling of being watched, and those shadows. There was so much going on that we could not cover it all here. We left D from Airfield, feeling that there was unfinished business here. So we returned. And that, along with all the other things that happened, that we witnessed and simply cannot explain, is, as they say, a whole other video.